we're going to discuss Elon Musk's Neuralink and his new presentation slash announcement of what they've been working on with their consumer brain to computer interface device that's going to save humanity from artificial intelligence taking over and killing us all by us becoming symbiotic with it by putting an interface into our actual brain. And ultimately to help secure humanity's uh, future as a civilization relative to AI. I do want to emphasize that it's not going to be like suddenly uh, Neuralink will have this incredible neural lace and start taking over people's brains. Okay. It will take a long time. <laughs> You would think by now I'd be over the shock. I'd be over the phase of making jokes about science fiction movies coming true and warning people of the dystopian nature of the future that's being built here. But I'm still not over it. And that's even after three and a half years of research into the film The Minds of Men, which I feel like I've now seen the, the film we made is now being turned into the punchline of a bad joke on all of humanity. That's kind of how I feel when I'm watching Elon Musk's Neuralink presentation, which most of you probably have heard that Neuralink broke their silence after several years and has come out now to present the plan of how they're going to normalize and commercialize brain computer interfaces and bring those to the public. I feel like this is the big new myth for the coming age. They really want to get people on the grid in the most personal, intimate kind of way by having their brain controlled by an electronic device. And this is the greatest or the worst sales pitch of all time. Meaning that we can ultimately Yeah, this is gonna sound pretty weird, but um, achieve a sort of symbiosis with artificial intelligence. Aaron and I sat through and watched this, and we're just gonna play a few clips from this. You put a link, you can go watch the whole hour and 45 minutes for yourself if you really wanna subject yourself to it. It took us a while to watch this and make this video because we knew going in this was gonna be extremely depressing. and. Even with someone like Elon Musk selling it to you, it's still extremely depressing. In fact, maybe more so considering how many times he made jokes and laughed about it. And I haven't met anyone who, yes, who wants to get rid of either the cortex or the limbic system. Because like everything's got robust electronics and algorithms at this point. Um, but not threads. <laughs> I feel like I'm in transcendence. Um, that's, actually, I wasn't transcendent. Um. <laughs> and the jokes aren't funny. It, it's, it's basically Bluetooth to your phone. Because we'll have to watch the App Store updates for that one. <laughs> Make sure we don't have a driver issue. Um, <laughs> like, updating. And the laughter is creepy. <laughs> um. <laughs> So, the, 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 the <laughs> I mean, at one point he even makes this joke. It's not like we're just going to have this neural lace and start taking over people's brains. <laughs> so, I do want to emphasize that it's not going to be like suddenly uh, Neuralink will have this incredible neural lace and start taking over people's brains. Okay. It, it will take a long time. <laughs> Um, so, and, and, and you'll see it coming. The guy th obviously thinks this is extremely funny. For the record, he is my favorite techno overlord. <laughs> I feel like I'm in transcendence. Um, that's, actually, I wasn't transcendence. Um. <laughs> I think it's really alarming the way that this is being rolled out. He's been saying, Elon Musk has been saying now for years that AI is going to turn us all into pets. And so because it's going to be so super intelligent, we're going to be like ants or cats or whatever to the AI. If you, know, if you have ultra intelligent AI, um, we would be so, so far below them in intelligence that it would be, would be like, you know, a pet. Basically. Pet, that's what I was thinking. Like a pet. Cat. Like a cat. A cat. Like a cat. Be like a cat. house cat. Yeah, we like the house cat. We have to symbiotically merge ourselves with it to make ourselves 
worthy of having our lives spared, I guess, by this all-knowing AI that we're creating. It's like, oh, we built this thing. It could destroy everything. Sorry about that, guys. But hey, if you don't want to get destroyed, better put this stuff inside of your brain and merge with it. But I, I think even in a benign AI scenario, we will be left behind. Um, and so and hopefully it is a benign scenario. Um, but I think with um, a high bandwidth brain machine interface, I think we can actually go along for the ride. Um, and we can effectively have the option of merging with AI. You see the problem reaction solution of this situation? It's ridiculous. It, it's, <laughs> it's exactly a false choice. It's a Hegelian dialectic false problem with a phony solution to synthesize something that people would have never just outright chosen, which is to put something in your brain that basically has an electronic microchip component. Yeah, he's talking about having read-write access to your brain through electrodes. You remember a couple years ago, it was frequently a headline that artificial intelligence is becoming too dangerous. And then people were surprised when even Bill Gates and Elon Musk said, yep, AI is too dangerous. We're going to have to do something. And they agreed it was this huge danger. They didn't say what they were going to do yet. But then more and more, if you paid attention to Elon Musk's comments, he has the solution. He'd like to know if someone has a better solution, of course. I, I think that's the best outcome. I, I hope so. If anybody's got better ideas, I'd love to hear it. The solution would be to merge our brains with AI and create a digital, electronic, artificial, synthetic consciousness that would effectively merge us with AI. It's a false choice on the idea that AI is going to be so dangerous and so out of control that the best thing we could do to protect ourselves against it is to proactively become the very danger that could destroy us. It's kind of strange. It's very unsettling when you see it for what it is. And that's the argument that we've been hearing now for over two years coming from the likes of musk and all these other tech guys but that is not how they started the presentation how they start the presentation is by saying they're they're actually building this because they just really want to cure neurological disorders um, and it, i think unless we have some sort of brain machine interface uh, that can solve uh, brain ailments of all kinds whether it's an accident or uh, congenital we can solve that with a chip and, and this is something that I think most people don't uh, quite understand yet. He opens up this presentation by making it sound like what he's really interested in now is, is, is helping people who have neurological issues, like they're paralyzed and stuff like that, which is not something he has ever, ever mentioned before in any of the times that he has talked about Neuralink or Neuralace that I've ever seen. And the way that he talks about it here is like it's basically just this afterthought hurdle they have to go through in order to get it officially approved. And then once it's approved, it can then be used for the other reasons. Getting, getting FDA approval for implantable or devices of any kind is quite, quite difficult. Um, and this will be a slow process where we will gradually increase the um, issues that we solve until ultimately we can do a full uh, brain machine interface. But it comes across as just being an obvious thing they have to say they're doing in order for them to get FDA approval of a new medical device like this. Now we can move on to just giving this electively to people who don't have those issues. Um, so in, in the limit, after, after solving a bunch of brain related uh, diseases, there is the, the existential, uh, it's mitigation of the existential threat of AI. Or yeah, this is the point of it. Um. <laughs> yep, it's a ploy, and we came across this again and again in the Minds of Men film as far back as Wilder Penfield and what he was doing at the Montreal Neurological Institute. It was all based supposedly on dealing with epilepsy because there was no better treatment, so they may as well open people's brains and experiment. Dr. Penfield conducted, quote, treatments of last resort. It has been necessary to operate on a good many men and women, good many hundreds, and to expose the brain under local anesthesia with the patient conscious. 
For Penfield, these risky experimental surgeries were worth it. He was creating what was known as the homunculus, a veritable map for the outer cortex, and a code towards understanding the inner workings of the brain. But it was under the guise of trying to help people and just having a poke around while they're in there helping people. And it, yeah, it's a camel's nose under the tent. That's what they've been doing throughout all these years. But this time it's obvious and it's admitted up front. And we, we hope to uh, have this uh, aspirationally in, in a human patient um, before the end of next year. So this is not, not far. Because we have Elon Musk talking about this Neuralace, Neuralink technology for years before when they were just simply talking about merging people's consciousness with technology and then after the fact him saying, well, we need FDA approval. So the, the, the why of Neuralink, uh, just to, to go over it, is I think it's important for us to address brain-related diseases and it looks like it could probably help with some neurological disorders. So yeah, it's for neurological disorders. Oh, and we want to transform people and make them hybrid technology entities. And uh, this, this is something I think is going to be really important um, at a civilization level scale. So through this entire presentation, it's pretty obvious that the point they're really trying to get across isn't doesn't have anything to do with curing people who have neurological disorders. It, the point they're trying to make for an hour and 45 minutes, aside from just trying to educate society at all on the basics of how their brains even work, since we live in a society where it's kind of strange that it's the most important, one of the most important organs you have in your entire body. And yet as a public, we're woefully ignorant on the basics of how our own brains actually work is to really assuage people that it's just going to be really tiny it, they say this how tiny these electrodes are going to be over and over and over to the point that it almost becomes like a, a joke so they're extremely tiny threads about a tenth roughly of the cross-sectional area of a, of a human hair this is how tiny the threads are extremely extremely small uh, it, it's so small you can't really even see it with in the picture with the penny they're all very very tiny threads are very tiny or if, if it was a drinking game you would probably die of alcohol poisoning um, and then you, you really need this to be done with a robot because it's very tiny and this is what what the robot looks like um, it, it all comes down to a very tiny tiny point but in fact the, the the actual needle that gets inserted is way way tinier that little tiny thing at the, the where the arrow is pointing. If you took a drink every time they said how tiny this is going to be and how non-invasive it's going to be. If you're going to go stick something in your brain, you, you, you want it to not be giant, uh, you want it to be tiny. Not to belabor the point, I know that Elon really hammered this in, but these things are very, very small. You won't notice it. That's the important part. <laughs> you won't like, you know, it's, uh, yeah. You, you, <laughs> you won't feel a thing. So they then they say, he says, and some other people that he brings up on stage talk about how this is going to be like just having LASIK or something. But our aim is to simplify the procedure. A painless opening in the skull below, quick and precise placement of threads into the cortex, no big scars, no hospital stays, no short procedures. Uh, sorry, no hospital stays, very short procedures. This instead is going to be a robot inserting all of these electrodes into people's brains that are tinier than the width of a human hair and then a chip. This is what the chip looks like. It's actually gonna be a chip in your brain. This is a photo of some of the prototypes that we've gone through. And you know if you've seen The Minds of Men, they've been inserting electrodes since at least the 1960s and leaving them in there for years at a time. But there's been a lot of cases where it's caused brain damage, hemorrhaging, destruction certainly of individual neurons and tissue areas and stuff so it's not without its dangers they claim they've rectified this now but keep in mind they said that stuff was safe at the time one of the things that really creeped me out watching this is just how they're going to start doing this surgery and, and how easy and painless and seemingly not a big deal they're going to try and make this for everyone because that was one of the main arguments going back to the minds of men that was made time and again about this technology when it did come out to the public was just that it's such an invasive surgery it it takes highly trained neuroscientists to perform this surgery 
they can't just you know this isn't something they can just abuse and widespread do to people it's labor intensive it's, it's yeah costly. they made these arguments over they and over never do it to the whole population it could never be done to everyone and they, and they said that again in the 70s when all the revelations came out they were saying that kind of stuff and so they've taken that criticism and now all these years later they've created a procedure that is going to be done by a robot it will be overseen by a neuroscientist but it's going to be performed by robots and they were talking about how they've designed a new robot specifically to put these tiny electrodes into people's brains it's going to be like an outpatient thing it's just going to require a local anesthetic it's not going to be that big of a deal at all so they've taken that one argument as to how this couldn't be abused or misused and they've throwing that out the window because they're going to scale this up with robots performing this surgery all over the place. It's going to be real. It's going to be a, a very simple procedure. And on top of that, it reminds me of something that Dr. Robert G. Heath out of New Orleans, who did unethical experimentation for the military, he's tied to the MK Ultra experimentation. And we actually played a clip of him in the film where he was interviewed for the media and he said something like, well, I don't see how it could be abused or misused. The control for the stimulation of the brain is in the patient's hands. There's no way that I can see that it could be abused or misused. If the uh, patient doesn't want to stimulate himself, he doesn't stimulate himself. The control is in his hands. But some people fear that the control won't stay in the patient's hands. This is going to be wirelessly connected to a phone app. For our first patients, we're looking at four, four sensors, three in motor areas and one in a somatosensory area, which are connected via very small wires tunneled under the scalp to an inductive coil behind the ear. And that connects wirelessly through the skin to a wearable device that we call the Link, which contains a Bluetooth radio and a battery. It'll be controlled through an iPhone app. You won't have to go to a doctor's office and have them have an exotic programmer to, uh, to configure it. I mean, I don't, how many times have we been told not just that back doors are built into all of this technology. We've been told that over and over again, not just with Snowden leaks and WikiLeaks and all the stuff that came out by the CIA, but we've been told time and again that anything connected to the internet can be hacked, anything. So why would anyone right there want to connect their brain to anything like that, knowing that that's even remotely a possibility? And Musk even makes these jokes. He makes jokes and la he's laughing and making jokes throughout this entire presentation. And one of the jokes he makes is that they're, <laughs> yeah, it's so funny, <laughs> right? Because this is just hilarious. One of the jokes he makes has to do with how it's not going to be used for ads because that would be really unethical because there's nothing you could do to stop it at that point. Yeah, because it's in your brain. No, there's no advertising. I mean, Jesus. <laughs> I mean, you'd have really no escape. I, we, we cannot do that. That would be uh, ethical barrier. Yeah, I mean, what came out in the 60s and 70s alarmed people so much that you had newspapers and TV programs asking the questions about mind control, and they tried to allay people's fears and soothe them and say, yeah, I'm, yes, but it's never going to happen. Well, they didn't lose interest in the brain. They wouldn't lose interest in the brain. And all, so all the advances in technology since then have unsurprisingly allowed tinier and tinier applications uh, in dealing with the brain, have allowed more precision and greater technological invasion. And even at the time in the 60s and 70s, while Heath was downplaying the risk to society, he was fully aware that Dr. Delgado was just up the road using a remote control to electronically remotely stimulate the brains of his experimental subjects, some of which were primates, some of which were humans. Yeah, and M Musk and people like him are selling this to everyone as if this is just going to be this amazing device that's basically going to make people have superhero-like powers. I think it's safe to say you could repay the loan uh, if, <laughs> with superhuman intelligence. Um, I think it's a safe bet.